All right, Terry Caliendo, Dedicated Managers, back again. Hopefully this is going to be a quick one, but a very important one. Uh, we are going to, well, we're, we're here on the, the OAuth 2.0 Authorization Framework, i.e. TF6749. Um, I'm going to scroll down here, and we talked about the introduction in the last section. This one we're going to talk about roles. And this, I think, is the most important part to understanding uh, this documentation and being able to read this documentation because these terms come up over and over and if you don't understand them uh, you really get lost or at least I did it took me a lot of uh, a lot of times reading it over and over before I finally hammered these things down and really figured out what they were so let's go through these quickly uh, as quickly as I can do with my uh, verbose uh, technique and um, and we'll see uh, we'll see how we if we can come to an understanding of all the pieces so let's start it out with the resource owner and uh, the definition is an entity capable of granting access to a protected resource. Notice how it says entity and not a person. So it can actually be a couple different things. The, the main ones being a person, uh, the other main one potentially being another machine in a machine to machine type of um, situation that's, that's using this, the, the, um, the authorization framework. So know that the resource owner is the, um, the entity, the person, or the machine that has something that, that uh, wants to give access to something else. So in our, let's see, if we're talking in this diagram here, which we talked about in the last video, the, um, the I'm, thinking, I'm, I'm blanking on the word, the resource owner, the resource owner is the guy typing in their username and password. Um, the person that's doing the typing, they're the owner of the resource, and they're the one that's giving it in, giving um, the the grant, granting the access to other things. In this case, this owner, I am a test guy, is granting access to Yelp. Um, so he's the re oh no, he's granting access to his Gmail account to Yelp. Um, and if we go back to these, this diagram, I did draw.io on the very first introduction. I talked about how when you go to file, save, uh, it pops up this and wants to save it to one of your drives. So if, I, if it's my Google Drive, me, the person talking, um, this, I am the resource owner of the Google Drive here. So the resource owner in this case is me. I'm the one that can give permission uh, for draw.io to use my, my drive, my Google Drive. So that's the resource owner. It could also be a, you know, a machine that has access to um, a database or something that's giving another machine access to that database. Um, so it would be the, the, the first machine would be the resource owner in that case. The second one is the resource server. This is the server hosting the protected resources capable of accepting and responding to protected, to protected resource requests using access tokens. So this is the, the, the firewall or the thing that's in the way of getting to the information. So in this case, Gmail here is the resource server. My resource would be my contacts and Gmail is the server that's going to serve those up. Now again, this is not the way to do things. There's no tokens here. So this is, I'm just trying to relate it back to this. Um, and then on the draw.io situation, which is using the tokens, uh, when you hit file, save, uh, Google Drive is the resource server. I am the resource owner and Google Drive is the resource server. And now the next one, the client, this is the big one because this is what threw me for a loop for the longest time. Um, so let's read what it is, uh, the client. An application making protected resource requests on behalf of the resource owner and with its authorization. So, whoo, boy. Um, well, let's finish it. The term client does not imply any particular implementation characteristics, whether the application executes on a server, a desktop, or other devices. This is actually the key right here, is that this, 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 this client um, is going to change based on the situation. And what I want to show here, um, I pulled up this, nope, this diagram, where is it? Uh, this diagram here I found. Um, I was going to make basically make this same diagram, but I just did a quick search and found it here thanks to Jesse James Garrett at Adaptive Path. Um, this is a great differential between a traditional 
uh, web application of years past and still current. Um, this is how WordPress currently works. I'll talk about that in a second. And then there's the new Ajax type or SPA um, application, single page application. I like to say single page web application for some reason. But SPA, 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 yeah, isn't, uh, isn't what people call it. It's SPA, single page application. And really the difference between these two is the you the the browser that's this thing right here where I'm clicking on tabs right that's the browser and the user interface is created in that browser by some HTML code but when you click on a button in this situation so if this were a WordPress website a typical WordPress website if you click on a button um, you're gonna send some information over to the web server the web server is gonna do some work get some stuff from the the database or whatever it needs to do and recreate and send you a brand new HTML um, web page with data. Um, so every time you click a button, you're, you're reloading the page and getting a brand new page and the whole page reloads for the most part. Well, yeah, actually in this situation it is, unless it's got like a Ajax client somewhere in there, but for the most part it's a, you know, it's a, it's a single call that returns you a brand new web page. That's different from a SPA application, which I talked about in another set of videos. Um, I'll show that real quick. In this set of videos here, uh, using Vue.js authentication with Auth0, Vue.js is a SPA application, a single page application. Um, I guess that's redundant. A SPA single page application. Um, so that is this part right here, that Ajax engine is really the, um, it's kind of the combination of these two. Um, but the, the Vue.js is pretty much right here. So what happens is the user interface, the user would click on a button, um, and that's kind of part of this JavaScript part. And so then the JavaScript makes a request to a server, backend server, probably a REST server as opposed to a web or XML server. West, REST is kind of XML, but usually returning JSON. Um, but the, the Ajax, the JavaScript that's creating the website, just reaches out for data. And then the, the REST server down here gets some, can reach to the backend database and then send the data back. So only data comes back and then Vue re-renders that data for the user to see a new web page. But they did not load a whole new web page. The, the Vue.js thing just went and got new data and and returned a new um, new view for the client to see. So that's the difference is um, these are two different client types. Um, here in this scenario here, which we talked about was like the traditional PHP or the WordPress application, the web server is the client. This is the thing that's going to talk to the um, the resource server and get authorization from the user. Now, this is a protected environment. This is a server side system. This thing is protected. So you can put a, you know, a, a secret code back here. And we'll talk about that. That's very important. But this thing is, is not in the user's um, grasp. So you can hide things here. This Ajax engine where the Vue.js code resides and lives, that's in the browser client. All that code is available whether or not the client, you know, a, a typical person using it can access it. Probably not, but anybody with some, some programming experience can get at it um, just by right clicking. I mean, you just choose right click and inspect and, um, you know, I can see, uh, you know, what's going on here in the entire, you know, in the entire website. This is all the code, all the, shoot. All the code has to come to me. This is a pretty simple because it's only showing a picture. Um, but all the code has to come to me and I can see it all. So I can therefore, you can't hide a secret or a, um, a you know, it's, it, it's, what, it's the equivalent of a password. It's a secret code. Um, you can't hide it in an Ajax engine because it's, it's, it's hackable. The, the client, the browser has to give it to the person because it's downloaded to the, to the local user. So this type of client is going to do a different type of, um, of flow than this type of client. So that's really the thing to understand here is that this client can change. And when we talk down below, this is an overview, but we'll talk later about um, this type of authorization grant flow. And this is, this is going to be the, the, um, 
where the the server is protected because we're going to um, uh, the server authenticates the client. You'll see things about authent authenticating the client. If you're authenticating the client, then the client is most likely um, in in this situation over here because it's it's it can be authenticated because it's got a secret. As opposed to down here, we'll get into another diagram. Um, am I missing it? It's somewhere around here. Did I do that right or did I skip it? Um, oh, I was in the refresh token. I guess I got to go further. It's probably down in four. Um, here, author is the code grant. The code grant. This is the one where the um, where there's there's auth, auth, um, authentication of the client. Um, and again, we were reading about the token section above. This will come up again later, but only. Refresh tokens are only available from a, a client that has um, a, 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 that can be authenticated, which again is this situation over here because this thing can be can be secured. Then uh, the other one is oh man, I'm really destroying myself here. Um, yeah, the implicit grant. Here it is. The implicit grant. This is one where the client is a, like a Vue.js application, it can't hold a secret, so it's got a different flow. And we'll talk about this flow, but this, this one, and also that this one can't get a refresh token. So you have to be, make sure the user is present and re-authenticate them. Now there's ways to do it without, um, you know, the user really seeing what's happening, but um, you can't just get a, a refresh token through that process. And we'll, I'll get into that, that's getting way too far ahead. Um, so back to the roles again, the client can change. Hopefully that was understandable. That's a big deal to understand that that client can be different based on um, how you're accessing the information or who's, which application, where that application resides. Is it in a protected environment back here where it can send you know, a whole HTML page back here? Or is it a JavaScript Ajax engine that's living in the client that is not protected? Um, two different, very different things. Um, so that's that's really what you want to pay attention to there. And then the authorization server. Um, this is the server is issuing access tokens to the client after successfully authenticating the resource owner and obtaining authorization. So this is that third party that we talked about, or I talked about. You haven't really done much talking, and that's actually very disappointing on your part. You should try a little harder. Um, it's supposed to be a joke, but nobody there to laugh. Um, I'll work on my comedy. The... Um, in this situation here, I was uh, talking about you know throwing a third party out here that can can authorize Yelp to access the Gmail um, you know um, um, it, uh, what do we call it the, the person's contacts. So the authorization server gets an okay from the resource owner to allow the resource server to give the application. Um, the the client uh, Yelp would be the client in this case uh, the the information and I forgot what I was defining here the authorization server yeah that's this this thing out here is that authorization server that acts as that intermediary party and so in here in this situation um, when I go file save and it's asking for Google Drive so I click on Google Drive and I say no pick folder and I click to authorize here. Now I'm being taken to an authorization server. Google accounts.google.com is Google's auth is Google's authentic authentication server. Um, so I'm on Google's authentication server, which is going to um, grant access to my the resource owner's um, resource server, which is the Google Drive. I hope I got that right. It's actually very hard to. Uh, to say that properly using the right ter terminology. Um, if I didn't, uh, I guess we'll have a conversation in the comments if anybody ever sees this video. So um, that's the four main things. We'll get into that deeper as we keep going, but really want to dispel those out and make sure you understand that the client is really the thing that, that can change quite a bit and the, the resource owner can change a little, but the client really um, changes based on, on the security model. 
Then finally, this last paragraph, the, inter inter the interaction between the authorization server and the resource server is beyond the scope of this specification. So the talking between um, the authorization server and the resource server, how these guys can tell each other um, whether or not the access token that this guy is passing across and the client is using, um, that token that's getting passed around, this resource server needs to know that it's legitimate. Um, there's ways of doing that, and that's beyond the scope of this document. Um, and that gets into other stuff um, that, that's not obviously explained here because it's beyond the scope of this document. So that's kind of what that's saying there. Um, a single authorization server may issue, or, or I'm sorry, the authorization server may be the same server as the resource server or a separate entity. Usually, from my experience, it's a separate entity. Um, a single authorization server may issue access tokens accepted by multiple resources. Uh, that's an interesting thing that I haven't gotten too much into, um, but that is a case that may come up later as we discuss. And just doubling back real quick the, um, to this, because I had one more point, the interaction between the authorization server and the resource server is beyond the scope of this specification. Just to, again, hammer home, so we're talking about the, um, the interaction between the authorization server and the resource server. So when I pull up this um, here, that is the, the, the interaction between accounts.google.com and um, Google Drive, drive.google.com. The interaction between those two is beyond the scope of the OAuth. They can decide how they're going to work together um, using other specifications or they can still be compliant with the OAuth, the specific OAuth 2 without um, you know, following any specific rules. Um, we'll get into um, OpenID Connect, which adds on to OAuth 2. Hopefully I'll get into that. And I think, I'm not absolutely positive, but I think um, OpenID Connect does define that interaction. Um, but I'd have to look again. Uh, and then one more thing, just back in this situation here, you know, the, the resource server that I fictitiously put out here, the interaction between it and Gmail in this weird case here would not be defined, how these two are going to trust each other such that this guy can give, you know, that, that Gmail can trust this guy out here. So that's it. Um, that's it for this video. I tried to make it quick, but I still went 20 minutes long. That's what you're in for if you're subscribing. Hopefully you do subscribe. Hopefully you do like my long-windedness. Hopefully you find it helpful. Terry Caliendo, Dedicated Managers, throwing another video out there. Um, and uh, please do follow on uh, YouTube.com slash, let me see if I can get it right, Dedicated Managers. Um, this is the channel here. Hit that subscribe button. Thanks for following along. We'll see you in the next video. Happy life, happy coding, happy world. See you next time.